Greetings, everybody. Uh, Richard here, and I have a question for all of you wonderful money at uh, customers. Out of all the options below, we would be interested to know which enhancement pack or upgrade you would like to see the most. Your options are Class 153 Enhancement Pack, Class 166 165 Enhancement Pack, because we can't be asked to make a new model, Class 60 Enhancement Pack, Class 142 Diesel Multiple Unit Pack Upgrade, Class 90 Upgrade, Class 465, 466 Enhancement Pack Volume 2 Class 360 Enhancement Pack because LOL Class 92 Sound Pack Upgrade to an Enhancement Pack And finally a Class 442 Sound Pack Upgrade to an Enhancement Pack Pick your favourite choice in our list And we will get back to looking at the results shortly Oh, okay, looks like the Class 153 Enhancement Pack is the most popular choice. So I guess we'll begin progress on that project next then. Thank you for your time, and uh, keep an eye on our Facebook for updates. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> you've been trolled, you've been trolled, yes you've probably been told. Don't reply to this guy, he's just trying to get a rise out of you, yes it's true! So we're back again reviewing the Electro Star, are we? This better be good. Our beloved friends over at Arm Station Land Rover released their rather mega Class 377, 379 and 387 Enhancement Pack. Or in other words, the Enhanced Super Arbitry Skin. Because look, it's literally an Enhanced Super Arbitry Skin. I'm only saying that because I noticed a lot of the similarities already. Anyway, let's see whether this pack is either better than the previous one, or worth a one-way ticket to jump off Dover Cliffs. I know I'm late as per usual, but I'm sure none of you care. Roll the intro, Gary! Gary wrong train. So then, with this pack now available, it essentially means that you can now drive every mainline Electro Star in game. Apart from that one. Whether you want to drive a Class 377-6 or 7 on a Suburban Southern service, a Class 387 on the Great Western Main Line, or a oh Class God, 379 on the West yeah. Angler hey, Main you Line. Yeah. Your oyster back my phone. This enhancement pack has everything covered. Also, because this EP still uses that utterly clapped 2012 Railwork 377 as the base model, don't expect everything to be accurate. Take the layout of the destination screens for example. I would complain about why this would be better off with a newer model, but there's no point in me constantly saying that when I just know it will never happen. Unless it's a tin can from the 60s. But hey, at least the windows have been accurately modelled, along with that front destination screen, courtesy of Mr. Studios. However, may I just point out that 379s have a slightly different destination layout compared to the other classes? as clearly shown here, so I'm afraid that this is wrong. Plus Richard, you missed one out you plop. Anyway, deliveries. Southern, Gatwick Express, X Gatwick Express, National Express in Greater Anglia, Kensington and Great Northern, X Great Northern, C2C, Great Western Railway, and... What? Well, apart from Heathrow Express not making an appearance for some reason, it's good to see a nice variety of liveries provided, though the Great Northern one unfortunately has the issue of being too clean. If you've seen the state of them, that is. <laughs> if we shuffle over into the inside of the external model, we can see that the seats have been changed, which is good because I don't have to slice their heads off for not attempting that in the first place. But more on the seats later. They could have changed the pole colours though, as much by surprise, they're all the wrong colour. Freeware patch required, please. Another feature provided by Mr. Studios is the addition of more new interiors. Because yes, we are very, very consistent, said Richard. At first glance, it does look like an incredibly well done attempt. Until you spot the errors. Firstly, the seats. The top half of it looks okay. But my god, what happened here? It makes the seats look even more comfortable than they actually are. And you've got to love them low-res maquette textures too. Next, the doors, which look awful. I mean, they generally look awful. Those windows are too short, and the stickers are... not quite. Also, why are there only door buttons on one side? It should be on both sides. But no, applying buttons on both sides is like working long hours mining for gold in a little. So one will do. Melon. Plus in some interiors, the letters on top here should be a bit more over to the side, but you know, too much effort in it. And look at the state of those completely inaccurate 4K quality maps. Seriously though, that just looks horrible. Possibly respective maps could have been nice, you know? 
Now you see the destination box, and now you don't. Haha, <laughs> show your friends! Even worse, see what happens when I turn off the saloon lights. Yep, totally not balked. You can just tell the job on this interior is rushed, which is a massive shame. Dare I say the effort was good enough? Mmm, I don't know. But let's move on to the cab, as to ensure we got the best out of this enhancement pack, as well as our value for money, Armstrong Powerhouse did all they could to not provide us with a new one. Because no, not at all are the cabs in the 387 different, so why not just retexture it? Bloody jokers. How much do they want from us? Looking at the other features, they're all pretty much the same as the 375 and 377 ones, so there's not that much point in going through them again. <laughs> what? The video has to reach 10 minutes? Gaff yeah, for feck's sake, fine. TMS, GSMR, Physics, Driver Only Operation, Neutral Section, Dual Voltage, Cold, Wheel Slip. <laughs> oh, the now, this is where things get really nasty as we move on to reviewing the sounds. And since I'm very familiar with the different sounds these particular electro styles make, I'm expecting everything to be top notch. So, they've reused that recording from the previous EP, which is good because the second gen Lecky actually sounds like that, whereas the older one sounds more like... I should have pointed that out in the other video, but oh well. Next sound, please. I tell you what, that's actually a fairly decent recording. Ah, for God's sake. Care to tell me where that hissing sound at the end went? I mean, it could vary in certain classes, but no, I'm afraid the compressor sounds are incorrect for that reason. Yep, I'd say the doors sound accurate enough, so I'll give those recordings a pass. Are the interior sounds the same though? Nope, the MB recordings of the inside are actually quite different, and I quite like them. TPWS and AWS operational. Thank you, Gladys. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. Cue the motors. Mother fuck! Of course they just reused those absolutely horrendous motor recordings from the Class 377. Like. What were the chances? But oh no wait, they added in a high speed motor sound to try and make up for it. Yeah, nice try guys. Just to make it 900% clear, the motors on a 377-6 and 7, 379 and 387 do not sound the same as a 375 and 377. Since they are more modern electro stars, the sounds have a slightly different tone. And just so you fully understand my point, Here's how they both sound in real life. You see? Plus, to make things worse, still no interior motor recordings, whoopsie daisy. And to finish things off... The dynamic brake doesn't cut out like that. Ugh. You know what? I can't be bothered anymore. The burning you feel? It is shame. Learn to stop cutting corners, damn it. So, the final price of this enhancement pack sums up to $16.99 again, with an $11.99 discount for those who also own the 377 pack, and this is what I think of the price altogether. It's a scam. 
because if anything, with the amount of rubbish that is featured, a more appropriate price tag for this pack should be around $9.99. Why would you pay almost £17 for a pack that has a rust passenger view, no new cab, a missing livery that was actually going to be included at one point, and reused motor sounds? Oh, I know why! Because perhaps everything was done this way to keep the pack cheap and affordable. A 100% accurate passenger view would bump up the price by $4.99. Newer motor recordings would increase the price by $5.99. Including the Heathrow Express livery would knock up the price by $8.99. The addition of a brand new cab would add up the price by $14.99. And an entirely new model would increase the price by $2,470.99. Meaning that without those extras, you would have saved a whopping two and a half grand. Thank you to my head of marketing for those completely faultless statistics. The point is, any addition made will most likely affect the final cost, but I think you will roughly catch my drift. Huh? Of course you don't get it, Gary! In conclusion, as much as I want to say that this pack is utterly terrible in every single way, it's borderline okay. On the other hand, apart from all the missing entities, the external modifications made to the windows, destination screens, passenger view, track lights, and pantograph lights still do a good enough job at depicting a newer generation Electro Star. So I suppose it serves its purpose at the end of the day. All those freeware reskins were beginning to show their age anyway, as much as I adored them back in the day. It's a shame though, because you don't know how many scenarios I have that still utilise those old reskins. I would go and swap them out with the new enhancement pack, but I quit one of the scenarios. Ugh, oh, how times change. Download my patch though. Thanks. So yeah, that's my view. Before I go though, I just need to check if the carriages are still labelled as a class 377-2- Oh you son of a-